Capacitors. Okay, so our goals for this session are first to talk about capacitors, then we'll go over the uh, energy stored in a capacitor, and finally we'll talk about a dielectric, and that's a piece of insulating material that is placed between the capacitor plates. So the situation we often uh, deal with is a parallel plate capacitor. So we take an identical pair of conducting plates, a pair of identical conducting plates, let me say, like two cookie sheets. Each of area A, they're parallel to each other, separated by some distance D. Now if there's nothing, that means vacuum, but air is close enough to vacuum for these purposes. What we call the capacitance, how much charge a capacitor can store for a given voltage, is given by this equation. It's proportional to the area and inversely proportional to the distance between the plates. And then there's this proportionality constant known as the permittivity of free space. And note that that constant is connected to this k constant that uh, we're familiar with. So it's 1 over 4 pi k. And there's another lovely equation that we can use for capacitors, that the charge stored is the capacitance multiplied by the uh, voltage across the capacitor, or the potential difference across the capacitor. So you can see that as the capacitance increases, the amount of charge stored also increases. And what you've got is plus Q on one plate and minus Q on the other plate. Then we say the capacitor stores a charge Q. Okay, so here's a little circuit diagram with a capacitor. The capacitor is the thing with the red and blue plates and the you see a couple of arrows going across, that's the electric field in there. And it's connected to a battery by a wire, one battery, uh, one connection going from the negative terminal of the battery to the, the negative plate, that's why it's negative, and another wire going from the positive terminal, that's the larger line on the battery, to the positive plate. And all the battery does is pump electrons from the positive plate around through the battery to the negative side, the negative plate. Okay, so in this case the capacitor voltage is the battery voltage. Alright, so there's two regimes under which we operate a capacitor. So one is that the battery remains connected. Okay, so here as you see the distance between the plate changes, then you'll see the voltage doesn't change because that's set by the battery. Uh, but lots of other things change. The, in order from on the left, there's capacitance, there's the charge stored, there's the stored energy. Then on the right, you get the capacitor voltage and the electric field. Okay, so you can see as it changes the distance between the plates, the only thing that doesn't change is the capacitor voltage. And now we're going to change the dielectric constant, which means we're just going to add some insulating material in between the plates. And typically, that helps you store more charge, so the capacitance goes up, the charge goes up, the energy goes up. The voltage in the field do not change in that particular case. Okay, The, vo the field is the uh, voltage divided by the distance between the plates, and both of those things are constant. Okay, so that's one regime under which we operate. Capacitor, the battery is connected. Okay, so the second regime is where we uh, charge the capacitor by connecting to the battery and then we remove the battery just by opening a switch and you can do it only on one side that's perfectly fine okay so we'll see that here so the capacitor is charged and we open the switch and then we mess with the uh, distance between the plates and in this case you see that the charge that's the second thing on the left stays the same the capacitance is changing as you're changing D, C is epsilon not A over D. Uh, the energy changes, the voltage is changing, which is interesting. You're going to get more voltage than you started with, which is kind of strange. And the field does not change in this case when we're just changing the plate separation. And that's simply because uh, it's coming from the charge. We haven't changed the amount of charge on there. Okay, so now when you mess with the dielectric constant, then you can change the, uh, the field. So when you uh, increase the dielectric constant, the capacitance goes up, the energy actually goes down, uh, the charge still stays the same, the voltage went down, the field went down as well. Okay, 
So different things hap can happen depending on whether the battery is connected to the capacitor or whether it's disconnected. Okay, so uh, you've got an electric field inside your capacitor plates. We assume that that field is uniform, goes from the plus plate to the minus plate, and the magnitude of that field is the potential difference, the voltage across the plates, divided by the plate uh, distance, the plate separation. Okay, so there's your uniform field. And you've got energy stored in there in the field itself. Okay, so you know that uh, if we take a single charge and move through a potential difference delta V, its potential energy changes by Q delta V. Now, a capacitor involves moving a whole bunch of charges from one plate to another, one at a time. You can imagine the battery doing that. And we find the energy stored is one half Q delta V. And why is it a half there? Well, the factor of a half is because on average the charges were moved through a potential difference of half the final voltage. Okay, so the first one that is pumped over, the voltage is zero, really. There's no difference between the plates. And then the more the battery pumps over, the, the bigger the voltage gets on the capacitor until it finally reaches delta V. So on average, it's going through half a, a delta V. Okay, and we can say that the energy stored, you can write in a number of different ways, right? Replacing Q is uh, Q by C delta V in the equation, for instance, you can write it as one half Q delta V, one half C delta V squared, or Q squared over 2C. Okay, so let's have a quick look at dielectrics, and this is just another name for an insulator. So when you put an insulator in between the capacitor plates, we call it a dielectric, and this is really what happens. So here's our insulator with no field. You've got some polar molecules that are randomly aligned, and then you stick it in the the capacitor, which has an electric field, and what you do is you align those polar molecules, if it is made of polar molecules. Here's another way to see it. So that, that dielectric material, the kind of yellow stuff, gets inserted into the uh, field of the capacitor, and a, a induced field is, you get an induced electric field inside the dielectric, which then partly cancels the field from the capacitor plates. So you see the field inside the dielectric is lower than it was uh, before when they just had the uh, capacitor plates. And that's what all these words say. Okay. And if the capacitor happens to be connected to a battery at the time, then the battery brings the field back to its original value, and that does so. It does so by storing a whole bunch more charge on there. So that's why you can get more charge with a dielectric. Okay, so every material has what's called a dielectric constant. It tells you how effective it is at uh, increasing the amount of charge stored. And the dielectric constant is a, is a unitless parameter. It's the original field without the dielectric divided by the field you get in the dielectric when you put the dielectric in the capacitor. Okay, so E0, again, is the field without the dielectric. E is the field with the dielectric. And, and then we modify our parallel plate capacitor equation by adding this constant. It looks like a K, but it's actually the Greek letter kappa, so our full uh, equation is C is capacitance is kappa epsilon naught A over D, and what we're really saying is adding a dielectric increases the capacitance by a factor of kappa. Okay, so let's just summarize all these equations. We've got our capacitance equation, Dielectric constant of air is close enough to 1. Vacuum is 1. Air is just a little, little tiny bit higher than 1. Charge stored, Q is C delta V. Electric field, E is delta V over D, or delta V is E times D. And energy stored, three equivalent equations. Okay, so that's it for our introduction to the capacitor.